Have you ever heard about posterior tibial tendon insufficiency? It's a mouthful, isn't it? But don't let the name intimidate you. In layman's terms, we're talking about a condition that affects the foot and the ankle. This is not some rare exotic disorder. In fact, it's pretty common and you might know it by a different name. Adult acquired flat foot. So what's the deal with PT tie? Well, it's all about the posterior tibial tendon. When this tendon becomes inflamed or torn, it can lead to a series of issues including the arch of your foot gradually collapsing. This results in what we call a flat foot, hence the name adult-acquired flat foot. It's important to note that PTTI isn't just a cosmetic issue, it can cause pain and discomfort, and it can impact your ability to walk or perform other everyday activities. Now that you have a basic understanding of what PTTI is, you might be wondering, what causes it? So, what causes posterior tibial tendon insufficiency? Well, let's dive right into it. There are several factors that contribute to the development of PTTI. One of the primary culprits is overuse. This is especially common in individuals who engage in high-impact activities such as long-distance running or sports that involve jumping. Consistent stress on the tendon can cause it to become inflamed and eventually deteriorate. Injury is another common cause. An ankle sprain or fracture can directly damage the posterior tibial tendon, leading to insufficiency. Even a minor injury can start a chain of events that weaken the tendon over time. Obesity can also play a significant role in the development of PTTI. Excess body weight puts additional strain on the tendon, increasing the chance of injury and inflammation. It's like carrying a backpack filled with rocks all the time. Eventually, the extra load can cause damage. Now let's talk about some underlying health conditions that can lead to PTTI. Diabetes is one of them. High blood sugar levels can cause damage to many parts of the body, including the tendons. This makes individuals with diabetes more susceptible to conditions like PTTI. Hypertension or high blood pressure is also a contributing factor. It can cause changes in the blood vessels that supply the tendon, leading to a decrease in the nutrients it receives. This can weaken the tendon and make it more prone to injury. Finally, the natural process of aging can contribute to PTTI. As we grow older, our tendons naturally lose their elasticity and resilience. This makes them more susceptible to injury in conditions like PTTI. So there you have it. Overuse, injury, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and aging are all factors that can contribute to the development of posterior tibial tendon insufficiency. Understanding these causes can help us take preventative measures and seek early treatment if needed. Knowing the causes is important, but recognizing the symptoms is crucial for early detection and treatment. Symptoms of PTTI can vary, but there are some common signs to look out for. One of the most noticeable symptoms is pain. This isn't your run-of-the-mill footache after a long day. We're talking about pain centered around the inside of the foot and ankle. It's the kind of discomfort that makes you wince every time you take a step. Swelling often accompanies this pain. You might notice your foot and ankle looking a little puffier than usual. This isn't a symptom to brush off. It's your body's way of telling you that something is not quite right in there. Now let's talk about the shape of your foot. With PTTI, you might notice your foot starting to flatten out. It's as if your arch has decided to pack up and leave. This can lead to what's known as overpronation. That's when your foot rolls excessively inwards when you walk or run. It can feel a bit like you're always walking on the inner edge of your foot. And then there's the tiptoe test. Try standing on your tiptoes. If you have PTDI, you might find this surprisingly difficult. Your posterior tibial tendon plays a key role in this action. And when it's not functioning properly, you're going to have a hard time doing your best ballerina impression. It's important to remember that these symptoms might not hit you all at once. They can sneak up on you, gradually worsening over time. You might start to notice a slight discomfort in your foot. Then a few weeks later, you might struggle to stand on your tiptoes. Before you know it, you're dealing with a full-blown case of PTTI. If you or someone you know is experiencing these symptoms, it's important to seek medical attention. Don't just dismiss it as a minor foot problem. PTTI can have serious implications if left untreated. So what are the treatment options for PTTI? Treatment for posterior tibial tendon insufficiency often involves a combination of therapies. 
This is because our aim is not just to alleviate the symptoms, but also to address the root cause of the issue and prevent further deterioration of the tendon. Let's start with the non-surgical treatment options. First up, we have orthotics. Orthotics are custom-designed shoe inserts that help redistribute the pressure on your foot more evenly. They can provide relief from pain and help improve your foot's alignment, hence reducing the stress on the posterior tibial tendon. Next, we have bracing. A brace, or a boot, can provide additional support to your foot and ankle and help prevent further damage to the tendon. It's like having a personal bodyguard for your foot, always there to protect it from harm. And then there's physical therapy. The goal of physical therapy is to strengthen the muscles in your foot and ankle to compensate for the weakened tendon. You'll work with a trained physical therapist who will guide you through a series of exercises designed specifically for your condition. Think of it as a personal trainer for your foot, helping it get stronger and healthier. But what if non-surgical treatments aren't enough? Well, in some cases, surgical intervention may be necessary. One such procedure is a tendon transfer. In this procedure, a surgeon will take a portion of another tendon in your foot and use it to replace the damaged part of your posterior tibial tendon. It's like giving your foot a fresh start, a chance to function properly again. Another surgical option is an osteotomy. This involves changing the alignment of the bones in your foot to reduce the strain on the tendon. Imagine it as a realignment service for your foot, getting everything back in its right place. Lastly, there's fusion, also known as arthrodesis. This is usually reserved for severe cases where the foot and ankle have become arthritic. In this procedure, the surgeon will fuse two or more bones together to limit movement and relieve pain. And there you have it, from orthotics to fusion, these are the various treatment options available for posterior tibial tendon insufficiency. Each one has its own benefits and drawbacks, and what works best for one person might not work as well for another. So it's important to have a thorough discussion with your doctor before deciding on a treatment plan. They will be able to guide you based on your specific condition, your lifestyle, and your overall health. Just remember, the primary goal of treatment is to relieve pain, improve foot function, and prevent further damage to the tendon. And in all cases, early intervention is key. The sooner you get treatment, the better your chances of preventing further complications. Remember, the best treatment option depends on the severity of the condition and the individual's overall health. Let's take a moment to summarize what we've learned about PTTI. Posterior tibial tendon insufficiency, or PTTI, is a condition involving the progressive weakening and eventual dysfunction of the posterior tibial tendon, a key structure in the foot that supports the arch and provides stability. This tendon's job is so crucial that any injury or strain can lead to a range of complications, from mild discomfort to debilitating pain and mobility issues. A variety of factors can contribute to PTTI. It could be due to overuse or strain, particularly in activities that put a lot of stress on the tendon. Obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and aging can also contribute to its development. In some cases, it could be a result of traumatic injury or even an anatomical abnormality. Symptoms of PTTI can vary greatly depending on the severity of the condition. It might start as a mild pain along the inside of the foot and ankle, swelling, or a flat foot deformity. As the condition advances, the pain might become more intense, making it difficult to stand or walk. The good news is there are various treatment options available for PTTI depending on its severity. Conservative treatments include rest, ice, compression, and elevation, alongside the use of orthotics or braces. Physical therapy could also be beneficial, focusing on strengthening and stretching exercises. In more severe cases, surgical intervention may be necessary. It's important to remember that early detection is key. The sooner PTTI is identified, the better the chances of successful treatment. If you notice any unusual pain, swelling, or a change in the shape of your foot, it's crucial to seek medical attention promptly. In conclusion, understanding conditions like PTTI is vital for maintaining our health and well-being. It's not just about knowing what it is, but also recognizing its causes, symptoms, and treatments. Next time you hear about posterior tibial tendon insufficiency, you'll know exactly what it means and how it's treated. Stay informed and take care of your health.